Having glimpsed into the architecture of BigQuery, we can move on to something which is a little more tangible to us as users, which is the arrangement of data. To start off, let's take a look at tables, which of course is a data structure where information is arranged in the form of rows and columns. Tables are an essential part of BigQuery, and you'll typically be working with many of them. And permissions can be assigned even at the individual table level. So while we can access data in tables, we can also get to them using views, which are in essence derivatives of tables. As in most relational databases, views in BigQuery are constructed by means of queries on one or more underlying tables. What then is a purpose of such a view? Well, the main purpose is to hide the complexity of an underlying query. A view can be defined as a query involving multiple joins and complex operations on data. And that same operation can be performed with a simple query against the view. Importantly, views in BigQuery do not store any data on their own. They are in essence layers of abstraction between the user and the underlying tables. Beyond that, though, it is also possible for us to assign permissions at the view level without granting users direct access to the underlying tables. Given that views do not store any data on their own, the cost of running queries against views is the same as querying the underlying data. What is a little different from a standard BigQuery view is a materialized view. This is also defined as a query against underlying data. However, the data returned by the query execution is cached. So a query against a materialized view is a query against that cached data. We can configure exactly how frequently this cache needs to be refreshed to avoid feeding users of the materialized view stale data. Some of the use cases of such views include pre-aggregating data so that the aggregation need not be performed on the fly, and we can simply retrieve them as is from the materialized view. Similarly, these can be used to store pre-filtered data so that only relevant information from the underlying tables is stored in the materialized view. And similarly, we can avoid join operations on the fly by storing the join data in such views. One more type of view supported in BigQuery is the authorized view. Users can be granted access to these views, and significantly, this is not the same as granting them access to the underlying data. If an authorized view is created by applying some filters on underlying data, a user of the view will only be able to view this filtered data and may not have access to the source tables. To enable authorized views, however, the view itself needs to be authorized to query the source data. So now that we have an understanding of the different types of views in BigQuery, we know that data can be accessed either via views or by querying tables. It is likely that you will end up with a number of related tables and views, and to group these together, BigQuery offers a construct called a dataset. Datasets in turn can be grouped together into a GCP project. With that, we have an understanding of how data can be grouped when it comes to BigQuery. But now let's zoom in a little bit on individual tables and see how this is represented. BigQuery adopts the columnar data model. So while each table is arranged as rows and columns, it is each column which is separately stored in a file block. Unlike relational databases where it is rows or records that are stored together, BigQuery stores the data in tables as columns. If a query requests specific columns in your table, it is just the corresponding file blocks which will be retrieved and processed. This, of course, can make data analysis or online analytical processing tasks very, very efficient. Beyond this, though, BigQuery also allows us to mutate the data in our tables, though these operations won't be as efficient as on a transactional database. While data is stored as columns, this does not mean that the entire column is stored together. These in turn can be split into segments called partitions. The partitioning may be based on one of the fields in your table, but these need to be either an integer or of a temporal type. Alternatively, you may also partition your data based on the time of ingestion. A crucial benefit of partitioning is that it reduces the number of bytes which you need to read 
since the data which you need may be retrieved from just a handful of partitions rather than having to process an entire column of data. And we will soon see that this has an effect on the costs of using BigQuery. Furthermore, partitioning also improves query performance since less data needs to be scanned and processed. And, to improve performance even further, partitioning can be combined with table clustering, which is one more means of collocating related data.